Okay then, guys. All right. What is up? It is I, Jane Papier, with another just an easy playthrough. Let's play, I guess. We're just gonna do a bit of a game called Jetpack. Uh, and uh, so this came out in 1983, I believe. Um, it's what it says on Rare Replay because it's what I'm playing this on. Um, on the, the the ZX Spectrum or ZX Spectrum, uh, however you want to say it. Uh, so this is a great classic uh, from Rare, uh, better known then as Ultimate Play the Game. Um, and they have other great games, not just Jetpack, but they have many others as well. Um, but Jetpack is the first one and is a great classic on the system. So yeah, uh, what you do in Jetpack then is um, you play as this spaceman, whatever, and you basically hold a button to shoot. So you shoot these enemies while you repair your ship. And you also collect things for more points and you can defeat more enemies and such. Uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. And I died there. Uh, luckily, with Rare Replay, you can have infinite lives on, which, I've, which is what I've got. So uh, I don't care. So yeah, this is what Jetpack is. Right, I'm just gonna go in the rocket ship, and then when once the rocket ship has fueled up, you can then progress to the next stage. Pretty much. So yeah, this is not really uh, a full game. Well, it is, but it's more it's more basic. Uh, you could call it an educational game, sort of, because it's about repairing a ship. But uh, well, not really. But you you know what I mean. This is all you do. Just repair your ship until it's fully completed. Oh my god. Are you serious? But this is a great classic. It's one of the first games that you would see where, whenever you buy Rare Replay on Xbox One. Uh, so yeah, uh, I am playing this on Xbox One X, by the way. so Because uh, it is on Rare Replay. Uh, it's pretty much the only way most people are going to play some of these Spectrum games nowadays without an emulator Because um, I think I don't know how much uh, ZX Spectrums or ZX Spectrums costs, but I'm just gonna say ZX Spectrum because Why not uh, it, it, it I'm too much British to say ZX Spectrum So why not a ZX Spectrum uh, for all of you Americans and some British like me for still but yeah, the ZX Spectrum, I, I don't know how much they cost. Uh, I don't know if they're expensive. Uh, they shouldn't be, but I mean... Um, but they're probably not cheap nowadays. Especially the games, they're probably rare. I don't know if any of the games by Rare are very rare, <laughs> considering the name is Rare, but... I don't know, but... Uh, but I guess... Um, uh, they're probably still like uh, uh, pro they're probably like well they are the best known games on the ZX Spectrum, but uh, but um, but I don't know if they're like really worth getting on an actual console, and if not, then you can always just play them on Rare Replay um, or just emulate them because um, I think it is uh, cassette tapes they use. Um, I think the Spectrum uses uh, cassette tapes. I, I can't remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. Yeah, and you could easily copy them as well. But I don't know how you would do it nowadays, considering we we've moved since physical media has moved onto discs and sometimes cartridges. But I mean, I guess tapes are still a thing. You can still buy VHS tapes, not just VHS tapes, but even uh, video game tapes. So. Um, Spectrum tapes. I think Commodore tapes you can copy as well, but with with Spectrum you could easily copy them and Yeah, so uh, unless you can you're capable of doing that then I, I I guess you could do that on an actual console, but I mean Still but But anyways, yes jetpack it is a great uh, Game on the system. Um, I highly recommend it. It is basic um and obviously, if you can't afford a Spectrum, you can obviously play this on Rare Replay, which is what I'm on. Uh, or, 
if you have a, if you have Donkey Kong 64 on the Nintendo 64, you can also play Jetpack there as well, and it's even a requirement to to actually uh, finish the game as well, uh, to finish DK64, uh, is to play Jetpack and get a certain amount of points to get a rareware coin. So, uh, which is for DK64 and all that. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, so technically, uh, it's not just for that, but it's also to have fun with. Uh, and, and it's technically, and it's technically a great port. It, 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 I'm glad they, uh, I'm surprised they managed to, to make a ZX Spectrum game work on a Nintendo 64. And what is wrong with my capture card there? Okay, guys, I'm back. I hate it when my capture card does that stuff. I don't know what happened there, but at least we're still operating. So that's the good news. And we're just going to repair the ship. And all you do is basically shoot enemies as well. It's different in every level. And I think after and I think after a certain amount of levels, it just loops to the beginning again. So I believe after this one, it might loop to the beginning and we might finish the video off. It, it, this might be the shortest game I've ever done. Aside from Kirby Slide on the Game Boy Advance with the e-reader. But, okay, but I mean, like, the, the shortest console game, I'd say. Aside from, like, uh, classic Nintendo games like Donkey Kong and such, but I mean, still. Probably the shortest game Rare ever did. Because <laughs> um, then again, uh, games like this were basic back then, uh, so... They are good, but they're not as good as, like, the games we get nowadays, so... Um... Oh, come on! I'm trying to defeat more enemies! I'm trying to get more points! No! You stop hurting me! Oh no! Okay. No! Oh my god! Right, I get this chocolate bar. Yeah, it looks like chocolate. I don't know why. <laughs> but yeah, if you were playing Donkey Kong 64 and getting that rare coin, all you would do, all I did basically, was just stay on the first stage, which is the easiest. Or possibly go to another one and just shoot enemies because it's literally the easiest thing you can do. Sure, it might be slow, but who cares? At least you can get what you need uh, for that. So yeah, that this is basically all you do. Well, what happened? Oh, oh yeah, you can also rewind uh, with rare replay as well uh, by holding the shoulder buttons. And, oh, so the other shoulder button acts also as the jetpack, okay, instead of holding up, okay. I believe in DK64, uh, the controls are slightly different as well, so instead of holding up to float, you would hold the A button on the N64 controller. I think that's how they did it with that version, I don't know why. Uh, because uh, uh, at times I was used to the DK64 controls, but when I got to play this on Rare Replay, I'm like, Oh, wait, wait, I don't remember the controls being like this when I played it on uh, DK64. But it turns out they changed it. I don't know why. I don't know if the original controls are similar to Rare Replays or DK64s. I don't know, but I assume I assume uh, Rare Replay, because Rare Replay is meant to be like all Rare based. Yes, I know DK64 was made by Rare, along with the Donkey Kong Country trilogy, but that was back when Ninten when, that, when Rare was working for Nintendo. They were their second party developer um, before they were purchased by Microsoft in 2002. So <laughs> that begs why. So yeah, right. I'm just gonna head off. Head off to the moon. <laughs> okay, no, just kidding. <laughs> and yeah, we're back at the beginning, so... But I think we do have different... Oh, wait, no! Uh, no, we have different ships now. Okay, uh, and then I think... Then I think after certain more levels, then... Um, it loops, so... So we'll, we'll, go, we'll continue this longer then, so... I guess more trivia facts for about um, <laughs> jetpack if I if I knew any, but but yeah, this is back when uh, Rare was called well known as Ultimate Play the Game, 
uh, even though on Wikipedia Ultimate Play the game was apparently a different company, and the members of Rare moved from there to Rare, but I don't know the actual full story, but uh, but still, it's kind of interest. It's it is very interesting. You can also go off the screen like that. Uh, it's a good thing I got infinite lives as well because it makes this a lot easier. Oh no! <coughs> oh boy, I just burped. It's like we're getting different enemies all the time, but the level layout is basically the same. It's just different enemies. And all you do is repair your ship and boom. You can have two players with this as well, I think. Well, it's still one controller, so I think they intend you, so I'm player one and then some friend of mine could be player two or something. I think that's how they intended it initially, but but some people could do it, it for extra, more extra lives or something, despite having a separate score, but if they just want to get through the game, then yeah. But the thing is, we've got infinite lives here, so that's not really necessary. And the fact is, is that uh, Jetpack is really the only game I'm good at with the ZX Spectrum side. I'm not... I have played a couple of other ZX Spectrum games on this, uh, like, uh, well, Lunar Jetman and Attic Attack, but I'm not really good at them. Like, I've, I've played more Attic Attack than Lunar Jetman, but... Like, Lunar Jetman is kind of like the sequel to Jetpack, sort of. I don't know if it is, uh, because it's got, like, the same Jetpack dude, but... <laughs> um... And it came out the same year, or... Uh, but is it really a sequel, though? Or is it, like, set in the same series? I don't know. Now, come on, I'm trying to get this full. I mean, fuel, not full. <laughs> oh my god, who says it as full? <laughs> oh my god. Fuel. <laughs> uh, shoot, enemies everywhere. Oh, oh, apparently I can also hold the X button to... Float in the air. So then I don't have to keep holding up 24-7. They look like D-pads, oh my god. They're just flying Nintendo D-pads. <laughs> okay. Like, if the ship goes back to, like, the first one, then we'll finish it off, because I think it starts over then. Uh, that's when it starts over. What are those? Oh, my God. Um, and I have got every achievement for this uh, that you can think of, even all the snapshots, which are basically challenges. I've got all of them as well for Jetpack, so... Because um, Jetpack is just an easy game. It's like one of the easiest games Rare ever did. It's easier than like um uh than uh, like the late the later games and such. Like uh, still like the main reason I got Rare replay in the first place was to play the uh, HD versions of Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie because I really wanted to play those versions at my home, uh, but I only had the N64 versions, so um. Which at the time I had the English versions of both games, which Banjo Tui is known for being expensive, but now I have the Japanese versions on uh, Nintendo 64, which are cheaper. Uh, uh, and I can just play the English versions through these remasters, which Rare Replay has. They have the Xbox 360 versions that you could get on 360 via Xbox Live Arcade. But, yeah. That's the main reason I got Rare Replay in the first place, is to play that, and I guess to play games like Conquers by Third Day in the future and that, but, I mean, still. But I guess, uh, I guess uh, these games got my attention as well, and uh, I, I pretty much enjoy these as well, so, uh, Rare Replay is what got me to get an Xbox One in the first place. I think it's what, I think it's, I think Rare Replay is like, that, that only game that got people to buy an Xbox One. Well, mainly, mainly ones that like games like Banjo Kazooie and such, and that, uh, me being one of them. But I mean, still, 
Uh, that's probably one of the reasons why people wanted an Xbox One in the first place. It's just for rare replay. Uh, uh, and then hopefully later games. Like I, I've got like way more games on it. But back when I first got my normal Xbox One back in 2017 at Christmas, all I had was just Rare Replay. Uh, that was it. I had no other game. Uh, I think later in 2018 I got a um, I got the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis Classics collection, uh, which came out in 2018. Uh, which includes a lot of Sega Genesis and Mega Drive games, but uh, still, uh, mainly because I just wanted to play some Genesis games on the actual console. Like, not just Sonic, but I mean, other games as well, but I mean, y you know. <laughs> and then I got many other games on the Xbox One. Uh, I think Sonic Mania was the third game I've got on the Xbox One. Uh, Sonic Mania Plus, but you know what I mean. Um, oh, there's a third ship. Okay, I think, I think after the third ship, it might loop back to the beginning, so. And if, it, if I, if I recognise the third ship again, then we'll call it a day, because it is basically, but yeah, that's interesting, because the first time I got an Xbox One, which was in 2017, I just had Rare Replay. Uh, uh, no other game, just Rare Replay. <laughs> that was it. Uh, because that's what I got it for, mainly to play the HD remasters of Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, I think I also got a 360 game. My first Xbox 360 game that I've bought, uh, which doesn't count the Rare Replay stuff, but on actual disc, was Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Yeah, that was the first ever Xbox 360 game I ever got. On disc, even though I could play it for rare replay, I just wanted I wanted it on physical disc as well. So, yeah, still have it today, obviously. Uh, and now, if you look at my Xbox 360 collection nowadays, it is massive. Like I don't I don't have every single game on the Xbox 360, not all of them, but I've got like a lot. I have more 360 games than PlayStation 2 games. And more, and um, even more Xbox 360 games than original Xbox games, and more than Xbox One games, and obviously more than uh, Series X games, which I don't have a lot of Series X games, both ones that are Xbox One and Series X, and ones that are Series X only. I've only got one game that is Series X only. Uh, I think that's Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1. But. Still, um, but yeah, I've got, uh, yeah, so yeah, I have more 360 games than any other system, even more 360 games than Nintendo Wii games, and yet, the, the, well, yeah, the 360 was good back in 2005, uh, uh, aside from problems like the Red Ring of Death, which we all know about. Uh, the 360 is actually still a good console, uh, and I still recommend having one. Uh, especially if you want those games that don't work on Xbox One or Series X because of backwards compatibility. Even if they secretly work, but Microsoft did not make them backwards compatible. They just added a blacklist to make them not work, even if they do secretly work. They did that with original Xbox games as well on the 360, where a lot of the ones that say they don't work actually do secretly. But they're blacklisted, uh, probably because of licensing issues and such, but they still secretly work, even though legitimately they don't. But Or some will, but they have, like, graphical issues, and some just don't work at all. <laughs> so, yeah. But I don't really, I don't really play 360 games on Xbox One nowadays, I just play them uh, via, um... My actual 360, so... Same with original Xbox, I use an original Xbox to play original Xbox games. I do not use um, 360 or Xbox One, regardless if they're backwards compatible or not. And yes, with Xbox One it's better, because um, if you've got a, a broken disc and it partially recognises it, it would install it online uh, and all that. But what if you just want the original experience or you've not got any internet? Or you have, but it's really bad. Then, yeah, you're pretty much out of luck there. 
w with playing those games on newer systems because pretty much every 360 game and original Xbox game that are backwards compatible with the Xbox One, literally, they, they can only be installed through the internet. They don't get installed from the disc. Um, so the disc is only there for like a secret code or something to make them download for free, basically. That's pretty much how it works. And it's just like playing the games. Technically, they install and they're on the system, but you still need the disc to boot them up to prove the license, which is obviously piracy reasons, but still. And even on the Xbox 360, uh, you can choose to install games or not, but you still, even if you do that, you still need the disc to prove, to prove you're out there. Uh, which I guess is good. Uh, yeah, it, it's good to install it if you've got like a bad disc and then you want to keep that one, but install it with a good disc. But you keep the bad disc, so it still recognizes it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, if you if you if you press the um, uh, the right control stick, you get a CRT filter. That's kind of cool, isn't it? <laughs> Old school style, isn't it? <laughs> How everyone used to play games back in the 1980s and the 1990s, and I guess possibly the 1970s as well. If uh, if you were into like the the Odyssey and such, but uh, I don't really look into those games too much, but still, because I knew gaming existed in the 70s, but it wasn't as common as the 80s, like the things that were, the, like the media that was common in the 70s were mostly just movies, uh, that's what I'm familiar with, because I've seen a lot of movies from the 70s, but... I don't know a lot of video games from the 70s. Uh, like, I do know they uh, the 70s did have games, but they weren't as common as they are today. Compared to the 80s, they were. They, that's when they got more famous. And that is a brand new ship as well. Uh, I, f I think after this is uh, the first ship again, so... If I, if I recall correctly. Because that ship looks awesome. Oh my god, I wish I had a rocket ship like that. Imagine if Wallace from Wallace and Gromit could have a ship like that to go to the cheese moon. <laughs> okay. If you've if you've never watched the Grand Day Out with Wallace and Gromit back from 1989, that that is a classic. Like I don't know even know if you can consider that a film because it's only like 20 odd minutes. But <laughs> okay. We can class it as a short movie, but some class it as an actual film, even though technically it's a short film. Same with the wrong trousers. And a close shave. <laughs> but still. Um, but yeah, that rocket ship looks awesome. I wish I had that. Imagine going to different countries with a rocket ship. Instead of going through an airport and get, facing restrictions. Imagine using your own rocket ship to fly from England to America or vice versa. Instead of having to use an airport, which would take hours, and you have to face many restrictions, like food and that. Because uh, apparently you're not allowed to take your own food in a plane, uh, from what I've heard. Which is which is, makes no sense, even if it's like safe food or something. Um, and all that. Like, if it's stuff like alcohol, I get it, but I mean... But even things that are safe, <laughs> they still won't let you bring them in. It's it's, not, it's something they do for no reason. Like, there's no point of those restrictions at all. Ah, oh, and I got killed while shooting him at the same time. I want that green blob. Oh, and I got killed. Oh, no. Right. Shoot him. There we go. <sighs> I don't know if I can fast forward. No, I can't. So I thought you can fast forward with these, because these are emulator. These are like actual proper Spectrum ROMs being emulated. So there has to be a way to, to at least fast forward. Because you can rewind and save state. You can do that, but... But it turns out you can only save state with Spectrum games, and I think with some NES games as well. And... I think with Battletoads Arcade as well, which was an arcade game. 
But you can't you can't save state Nintendo 64 games, uh, which I have no clue why. Yes, they do have like save features and all that, but but these are still emulated. I think they're not like run on a new engine. They are still emulated N64 versions of the ROMs, just modified to remove the Nintendo references. That's it. Other than that, they're actual N64 ROMs. So, what gives? <laughs> the sound. That's all the game is. There's no music in this game either, so... That makes the... So that's... Uh, you could say the game's boring. Well, it sort of is, but... Like, the only reason I'm trying to play this game is because I just want to get... I just want to get a game done this April because I've not even thought of a game yet. So I thought, why not? I'll just do Jetpack. I know it's I know it's a simple, boring game, but... Well, I won't say boring, but you know what I mean. It's not as good as, like, games we have nowadays. Because I just want to get something done. I just want to get a video out, so... Yeah... I'm just desperate for a video creation, so... Uh, why not Jackpack? And, and I could try other rare games. Uh, Luna Jetman, Attic Attack. I could try Saber Wolf, which I've not done that yet. Same, along with its sequels, Underworld and Night Law. I've not done them yet as well. I think there's a fourth sequel as well uh, to Saber Wolf, which is not in Rare Replay. Uh, and... Um, I don't know if... Um, if, I, if I'm capable of emulating Spectrum games, then I could try it out, but I mean... Still! And I've heard it with a, ZX, with a ZX Spectrum, it also takes like 10 minutes for a game to boot up. Seriously. It actually does. Um, um, though some of you who had one probably knows it already, but I mean, those who don't know, probably takes like 10 minutes, to, uh, I think it takes like 10 minutes to boot a game up. If, if I recall correctly, I think that's what my father told me once, when he had one, back in the 80s. Because uh, I wasn't around in the 80s, I was born in 2005, so... Yeah. Uh, so, I don't, re I don't really remember, but I think he did tell me that uh, ZX Spectrum games do take a while to boot up. Like, compared to NES games, you just put the cartridge in, press the power button, and boom, the game's running, you can play. But with a ZX Spectrum, you, ha uh, you put the cassette in and press the power button. You have to wait for like 10 minutes, I think. And then it boots up. And if it and if it doesn't load correctly, you're gonna have to wait another 20 minutes, which means you gotta wait 20, you gotta wait like 20 minutes just to play a game like this. <laughs> and that's insane, I know. Uh, then again, this was cassettes back then. This is how cassettes work, I, I think. I don't know how it worked on the Commodore 64. At least with the cassette games. I, I, I've heard not all Commodore games are cassettes, but... I, I, I don't really fully know about Commodore 64 too much, or Commodore Amiga. I don't know about them too much, but... Uh, still, it's still wild to have a... Like, uh, if it's something like a game installing on an Xbox One, that's obvious, but at least you don't have to make it install again to play. You only have to install it once, the first time you get it, and then you can play it, but then the next time you can just pop it in and then play it. And then boom. But imagine having to do that with all modern consoles, that you have to install it every time you want to play. Uh, that would be annoying, won't it? You, uh, it's a good thing you only have to install once, so then... So even if you got like a broken disc, at least it can still read the license and you can still play it because it's still on the hard drive, but still. But imagine having to do that nowadays and you have to wait for a while just to play something. Yep, yeah, uh, it's the another ship again, so we're going to call it a day here, so... That is uh, Jetpack and yeah, you can save state as well, you can have an auto save as well. Um, uh, I'm not going to save state because obviously I don't really, it, it, I, I, I can't be asked to, so. Uh, I'd say that'll be it for today's video, guys. So that was Jetpack uh, for the ZX Spectrum. I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. This has been appreciation of this. I know this has been like a boring video or something, but I just wanted to get a video out. I just wanted to get something done.
because uh, I, I couldn't think of anything because I'm trying to take breaks from Sonic games and such. But um, let me know what you think about this game, and I'll see you guys next time. Jane Pip out. See you guys next time. Bye!